Good morning, I'm Matt Brody and this is Simply Must Go and we are at Overland South, which is a new, uh, it's a camping, off-roading, overlanding sort of experience type of event. It's a little bit different than things like expos and stuff. There's not a bunch of vendors. Uh, we are actually camped all around this really beautiful lake here. We got in last night and it was dark and it was raining and it was, it was sort of a, a test if you will, because this time I did things very differently. If you can see in the back, we've got the whole family. Minus one, our one daughter is actually in Italy, but we've got five of us camping, plus Captain, who's back there somewhere. So we've got five of us. So the girls are in the tent on top of Southlander, the boys are in the tent on the trailer, and I pulled the lucky straw and have the ground tent with the dog who was soaking wet last night because of all the rain. So I had a wet, nervous dog, who's a German Shepherd, by the way, if you don't know Captain, uh, laying on me all night. But we managed to get through, we're okay. We're a little damp, but not so much worse for wear or anything. But we're, we're making breakfast, we're making some coffee for the crew, they're getting up. This is uh, a couple of them's first time camping too. And so uh, this should be a really interesting event. There's an obstacle course. Oh, this is the exciting part. There's so much going on in this video. I tell you what, we brought Emo. So Emo's here to do the obstacle course. So uh, in the midst of all the rain, we, we brought the YJ. And for the record, there are people out there in the comments section who have said, I'm not a real Jeeper. Now I wanna tell you this, only a real Jeeper drives two and a half hours in the rain with no doors and no top to get to an obstacle course. If that's not a real Jeeper, I don't know what is. With the sun coming out, we were excited to see what all Overland South had in store for us. This event was really focused on being a fun, educational, and exciting experience for those in the off-road, camping, and overland community to come together and hang out, learn, explore, and fellowship. There wasn't much in the way of traditional vendors. Instead, Overland South offered something a little different, like kayaking, or one of my favorites, fossil hunting. Palmetto fossil excursions came with a huge assortment of megalodon and other prehistoric shark teeth and fossils. They gave some information about the rich local fossils that can be found in the area. A single shark loses up to 35,000 teeth in its lifetime, and prehistoric South Carolina was a hotbed for megalodon, making the low country of South Carolina one of the richest places to find these massive teeth. The National Guard was also on hand and one lucky raffle winner got to ride the obstacle course in the Humvee. The exhibitors were great, but the real draw for me was getting to take the YJ out on the obstacle course. But before we could do that, we got a very special first-hand look at what was in store for us. So the boys and I have been invited to ride with Jeff, who's the guy that started Overland South in his Unamog and go ride the courses and go look at the uh, I guess the obstacle course and the challenge course, or I guess it's the trail and the challenge course. Anyway, we're gonna ride it in this. <laughs> That's gonna be stinking amazing. I'm so excited, look at this thing. Hey, I'm Jeff Montgomery, I'm the founder of Overland South. This is a Unimog 1350L. It's a 1990. Um, Unimogs are made by Mercedes-Benz, as you can tell. They are used for agricultural, military, industrial applications, and of course, people have made them into some serious off-roaders. So I bought this in about 2016 off of eBay, and uh, it was in Denver, Colorado. One of probably three people in the U.S. who specialize in working on Unimogs is in Denver, so I had it shipped across town, um, and he had it for about another four years. And every time we ran out of something good to do, he's like, all right, we're gonna do this next, and we're gonna do this next. Uh, and then finally, about two years ago, uh, we were gonna do a SCAR trip, and uh, so I said, man, we're doing this trip. I need the Unimog and finally got it home for that. Financially, it's a terrible decision. I know I should sell it, um, but every time I start this thing up and it starts up every time, no problem. And I just get a big smile on my face every time. I and mean, there's not a time that I have started this up and not just, just smiled about it. It's, uh, it's an absolute dream to own. First, we're gonna stop over by the challenge course. I haven't seen it today. Uh, I have a, a group of great volunteer guys that come out 
weeks in advance, and uh, we have spent uh, days and days making this, uh, this four-wheel drive challenge course. So we'll go over and check it out. I tend not to do the challenge course until the very end because it, uh, it can tear it up some, and I don't wanna, don't wanna ruin that for the other people going. Uh, from there, let's see, we'll go, we'll, we'll take a loop around the property. We'll see if we can find some, um, there's some trails. There are about 30 plus miles of trails in our area. Some of them are nice wide dirt roads or rock roads like this. Some of them are trails and some of them, you look at it and you go, is that a trail or isn't it? It's hard to tell. Uh, there are trails that haven't been ridden on in years out here. So they got saplings. Um, so we'll go see if we can help them tamp that down and keep the trails going. And uh, we'll see where it goes from there. Oh, look at the retired LMTV out there. Wonder if he went over. Oh, look at this mud. All right, at some point here, we'll have to put it in four wheel drive, but we'll put that off as long as we can. We're gonna do the course. We were planning on happened. it, but we're gonna do it. Why not, right? All right, we're on. Hold on to your butts. Yeah. That is huge. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> This is our diff twister up here, so we should be able to whoa, get a wheel in the air, hopefully. <clears throat> I haven't done this one yet. <laughs> it's gonna go where it wants for to an extent. Woo! Hold on. <laughs> that sounded expensive. <laughs> I do not want to get stuck here. Woo, look at that guy slide. Oh no. Oh man. Nice job. Ah, what the hell? Here we go. You know what? Actually. We'll get off the beaten path a little bit. And just one last burnout. That's uh, four wheel without the diffs locked. So even that's a little squishy. Trees are everywhere out here. What do you guys say? You having fun? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Big bump here. This one will rattle your teeth a little bit. All right. So there's a great variety of trails out here. Some are nice rock roads. Some are dirt roads. Some are trails that are a little tight. And some you're not sure if they're a trail at all or not. So let's just see what we can find along those lines. Uh, the landowner has been really supportive, uh, very cool, you know, basically on the property, if it looks like a trail, if it looks like it has the possibility of being a trail, you can go ahead and try it. Um, and there is actually, there's a really interesting environmental angle to this whole thing. Um, the guy who owns this property, and I know it, it seems incongruous, but um, he, he's a big environmentalist. He's all about uh, e-bikes and e-mobility. Um, there's a large power line trail that cuts through the property. And of course, uh, Dominion Energy owns the rights to do whatever they want to maintain it. And that usually involves a lot of chemicals. Um, and he negotiated with them and it took, I think, months of negotiations for him to be able to keep the levels down in the power line so that they won't spray chemicals in the, in the nature reserve. 
And so, paradoxically, by having our people do the, uh, the night rides on the power line trail, we're knocking down all these saplings and trees, and it's actually helping him uh, keep away a bunch of chemicals from being dumped. So it's one of those rare moments where the ecological use actually lines up with the fun motorized recreational use. So uh, we like to go out there and hit the power line trail and mow down any saplings we can find because um, that allows him to avoid uh, chemicals being dumped. So cool, cool alignment there. Ooh, ooh. It's coming. I don't even know what to say after that. My brain is scrambled. Now that was without the diff locks. Big bumps. This thing is awesome. It's almost so awesome it's scary. Like that's Quiet through here, just bouncing around. I'm doing my best to hold this still, yeah. but I know this is yeah. not still. This is a cluster of camera work right here. <laughs> well, <laughs> pretty good considering the circumstances. It's not so much the bumps, it's the sudden trees that enter from the side. Yeah, you know? <laughs> they jump out. I'll tell you. They just jump out and try to get you. Man. Yeah. Big bump. Another one. Trees. Trees. Big bump. <laughs> Hold on. Whoa. <laughs> like if Disney decided to do an off-road roller coaster. Nah. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is what it would feel like. <laughs> so this LMTV got stuck and uh, did not make it through this part of the challenge course. And so we're still in the Unimog and we're going to winch him out because what what better thing to get him out of this than us? At this point, the Unimog started getting pulled forward, and if there was ever a foreshadowing moment, this would be it. Well, he's pretty stuck. He's not coming out of that easy, so we're going to get another vehicle to come out and see if we can't pull him in another direction first. Even with the two winch lines, the LMTV wasn't moving, so it was time to start using a snatch block. A snatch block is basically a pulley that allows you to increase the pulling force without increasing the strain on the winch. It's all very sciencey, but basically we just doubled our pulling force from the Unimog. Got him out. All right. Yeah. I did all the work. All right. That was pretty cool to see. That's actually the first recovery I've been a part of. Even though I was zero a part of it, I just sat in the passenger seat filming. But it was cool to be here to see that. But it took two different vehicles and a snatch block to finally get him out of there. So he was good and stuck. Oh, man. That was a lot of fun, Jeff. Thank you so much for taking us along. That trail was awesome and gnarly. And I can't wait to try parts of it, parts of it in, uh, in emo a little bit later. But uh, yeah, that was that was awesome. Getting to be part of that recovery was really fun. and get to see all that. Uh, yeah, made the, the boys were very happy with that too. After our test run of the obstacle course, we headed back to the main tent for the Raptor demonstration. The birds, not the Fords. This was one of the things that the girls were looking forward to the most, and I have to say it was pretty cool to see these birds up close. Some other YJs were out on the challenge course, and I guess that was our cue to join in. <laughs> All right, so Will and I are in Emo, and we're getting ready to do the obstacle course, or at least parts of it. We'll see how far we decide to get and how she's doing, but uh, this is the first time that Emo has officially been off-road doing like actual obstacles and trails, which is what this build is sort of designed for. So we're gonna see how this goes. 
The challenge course and the trails were really muddy and soupy from the rains the last couple of days, but despite the open differentials in the YJ, we had no issues with traction for the most part. I know the YJ makes this look easy, but this is where that FJ almost got stuck in front of the Unimog. And this is about the point where everything started going south. I cut too hard and slid a little further to the side than I had intended and ended up catching myself hard, turtling myself on a large log. You got turtled. But what I hoped would be a quick recovery wasn't. We tried winching to this tractor, but even with him pulling in reverse, I was pulling him to me, instead of me getting pulled out over the log. So next I tried something a little bigger, but trying to winch into this Tacoma just pulled the Tacoma into me as well. So it was time to change our strategies a little bit. I had the Tacoma move up to drier ground and winch me out from behind. Okay. <laughs> so that was awesome. That was like my first big get stuck, get recovered moment. So that was awesome. Uh, took a bit to get it done because I was, I was stuck. No, you're good. <laughs> it's their fault. They told me I could do it. <laughs> Will, on the other hand, told me I was a moron for trying. I did. But I didn't listen to him. I listened to strangers. That's what I do. But it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. I think I could have done it. I got a bad line. I slid and then got kind of off to the side, and that just got me super turtled. So anyway, it's my fault. Bad, bad driving, I think. But yeah. All right. We're going to go get dinner now because I'm hungry. Apparently, uh, getting recovered works up an appetite. After dinner, we hung out for a bit at the main tent to hear some live music. I even picked up the guitar and played a few songs for the crowd. When I was just a baby, my mama told me, son, always be a good boy, don't ever play with guns, but I shot a man in freedom just to watch him die. 
After doing my best to prevent people's ears from bleeding, we decided to join in for one last night ride, which was a lot of fun, but a lot of people got stuck. But not us, the YJ had zero issues. Well, good morning. We had a good night last night. We came back, we had some dinner, had some barbecue. Uh, Will and I ended up doing the night ride last night, and I'll show you email in a second, but uh, we ended up hanging out, listening to some music for a while, and then everyone came back when it pretty much got dark, and then at 10, we did the night ride. Uh, it's a beautiful morning this morning. As you can see, it's just gorgeous. Everyone else is basically asleep, but I'm up. Uh, the boys just got up making some bacon and some coffee for everybody. Should be a nice little day to pack up and uh, get home. But first, I gotta, I gotta show you emo. Oh my gosh, the mud. We had a great time at Overland South, mud and all. So until next time, God bless, and we'll see you on the trails.